if we don't fully understand what the user is trying to do, if we make it present as much data to them as we can, then that seems to be a little more useful. Hey developers, thank you for stopping by for part two of the Learn Python Object Oriented Programming by Building an Address Book. Uh, in part one, we went ahead and made the people objects and created a terminal application to create people and add them into that object and then print it out. Uh, we're going to extend up on that concept here in this tutorial by uh, saving multiple people within a list and then printing out all the people within our address book and providing a way to search for those people. And then in part three and the final part of this little mini tutorial, uh, we are going to be saving people to files and then loading that in when we run the program. If you do end up watching all the parts and you learn something, please do like and subscribe to the channel. It's a big help and it gives me that great motivation to keep pumping out tutorials for you guys. All right, enjoy. A list in Python can be created very simply by doing uh, contacts equals list. And this will just give us like an empty section of memory to kind of placehold list. You can learn more about the list data structure below in the description where I have a blog post on linear data structures in Python. Also, a list is very efficient because it allows us to create and append items onto it instead of needing to allocate a bunch of space all at once. Uh, so this is kind of like a dynamic method, a dynamic way of associating items together. All right, so now that we have our list, we're going to need to modify our program to be able to create multiple contacts. And we also need a way to print out the whole list. To do this, we're going to need to provide the user a way to make different choices. You want to be able to have a choice to add a contact and have a choice to print out all of the contacts. So let's go ahead and modify the code to do that using our while loops and then conditional statements based on their input to do different things within the program. All right, we're back and I modified the program a little bit to be more of a command line interface. So I added that while loop. So while our user's input is not equal to the queue value, uh, we're gonna go ahead and keep prompting our user to enter options. Uh, the available options are to enter a new contact, to display all of the contacts, or to queue quit the program. If they put in something that's not one of these choices, it will just prompt them for the available options again. So that kind of does some of our error handling that we talked about in the previous tutorials. Uh, after we display the list of options, we take in their input, and then we created a conditional check to see if the user's input is equal to one. Uh, and then we reused our contact code to prompt them for that contact's information, uh, store that into a contact object, and then we print out, thank you, we've received your contact's information. If the user's input is Q, then we go ahead and break the loop, which will stop our program. And then we print out kind of a message that just says, thank you for using the address book. What you can see from this is we're not actually saving the context and we're not printing out the contact list. All this other code we've previously done, we just kind of refactored it and shifted it around, but I wanted to do the next bit of functionality on camera with you all. So we're gonna take our contact information and we're gonna store it into our contacts list that we previously made. So that way we can print it out later. So to do that, all we need to do is use our contacts variable and then since this is a built-in list and it has some methods associated with it, we're going to use the append method to add the our contact instance into our contacts list. That will go ahead and store those into memory so we can then use them in our display contacts function. To do the display contacts function, we'll go ahead and do a LF here, uh, users input equals two. Uh, and then we'll use a for loop, uh, which is just a built-in method in Python that will go ahead and look through every single thing within our list. And we can do that using for contact in contacts, which again, we'll just go through every single element in the contacts list. Uh, it will give us a reference for each particular guy in this contact variable. And then since a contact is a person, we can print out our contact at that specific instance of the list. This should allow us to store multiple people into the contacts and then print them out. Now that we have this bit of functionality extended into our program, let's go ahead and test it out and see that it works. 
Here's our command line interface with our available options. We enter a contact. We'll keep using John. Give him a phone number of 555-5555. Uh, thank you, we receive your contact's information. Uh, so we go back to the start, uh, enter another contact. We'll go ahead and enter Jane, his wife. And she's slightly older than John, and she has a different phone number than John. So we'll go ahead and store that. Thank you, we've received your contacts information. Uh, now let's go ahead and display our contacts that we have in our program. That displayed kind of quickly, and we didn't really see much, but if we scroll up here, we can see John Doe, Jane Doe. Uh, to make that a little smoother, we might want to put in a prompt before we automatically show the next available options. Contacts displayed. Hit enter to continue. And we can also see that our contacts are being printed out in such a way that there's an extra blank line. I think that's because our string method has the slash n character in it for a new line. Um, we can go ahead and remove that because the print method will automatically add new lines for us. So yeah, we don't need this here. Uh, let's rerun our program. Well, first let's quit this one. And as we can see in the program, we did a if users input dot lower equals Q. That's because a lot of times a user might enter a capital Q and you want the, to also quit the program without them being confused what happened uh, since this inputs a string and Python has built in string methods with lower being one of them. It will take all of the characters in that string, convert them to lowercase, and then that makes it easier to compare against a specific value. So select option capital Q should give us a thank you for using the address book. So thank you for using the address book and let's rerun it to see that we've updated our context so that we don't have those empty lines and that we are displaying that Actually, we don't want that to be a print. We want this to be an input. So that way, this will temporarily stop the execution before giving the uh, continued options. Enter a contact. As you can see, this is already slightly annoying that we have to enter contacts every single time. Uh, we should be storing this somewhere, uh, either a database or in a local file. Since this is a toy application, storing this in a local file would be just fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and do that as the next improvement that we'll make to this code as well as being able to search for a specific user. Because if you have 100 users in your address book, this is gonna be a very long list and you're not gonna necessarily be able to find the information you're looking for very quickly. So first name, Joe, last name. So this is Joe Doe, this is his brother, his older brother. And his wife's name is, um, it's not Jane, it's Angie Doe. Uh, Angie, though, is much older than Joe. Joe? Joe Doe? Doe Doe Doe. <laughs> Alright, so Angie's been stored. Joe's been stored. We should be able to display contacts now. So we see Joe's here. He's 555, blah, blah, blah. And then Angie doesn't have that much of a, a phone number. Uh, another piece of functionality that you can add on to this later would be able to edit contacts information. Um, but for now, we're not going to do that. So contacts are displayed, hit enter to continue. And now we have our new available options again, and we can quit. Let's add on the ability to search for a specific user and then display that person's contact information. So we'll go back into our base uh, command line interface uh, options, and we'll add a new option here. So there's a way you can do this much more modular, which would be more representative of a advanced program. But again, this is just an intro program and we'll just keep adding things in place here. But you may start to see that if we just keep adding things in line here, that this is gonna end up becoming very long and very hard to follow. That's why there's different patterns within software engineering that makes things more maintainable as the requirements grow over the lifetime of an application. All right, option three here will be find contact. This will add this as an option, and then we'll also need to add this into our conditional block here. To add it into the conditional block, we'll do elif users input equals three. And 
and then we want to look through our contacts again. Uh, again, if our contacts is really large, like a thousand people, this will take time to be able to do all of this, in which case you want to find a way to index your data so that you can look it up in a constant time. You can do that through the use of hash tables and database indexes. But for our toy example, we're just going to do for contact and contacts. We need to actually give the user a way to input what they're looking up. So we'll just do uh, enter contact name to look up. And then we'll put a new line character here to give a nice little kind of visual output for the user. We'll store this in the to lookup variable and then for contact in contacts. Using if to lookup in contact gives us the ability to search for substrings within a, a, a full string. <laughs> this gives us the ability to search for a first name or a last name. Uh, we can also use partial names. So if you have a friend named Jonathan and you have a friend named John and their names both start with J-O-N, this will print out both of those for you. It gives a little bit of flexibility in terms of uh, like if we don't fully understand what the user is trying to do, if we make it present as much data to them as we can, then that seems to be a little more useful. And we're actually going to use our in contact full name method here. So this allows us to search for first names and last names. And then we'll just go ahead and print the contact here. And we'll save this and run the program and then see if we can find our users in it. So in our contact, we'll enter John, John Doe. Then we'll enter John Bon Jovi. He's a little older. I don't remember his exact age. And then his phone number will be two. All right, so now we have John Doe and John Bon Jovi in our contacts. We also want to enter another one just so we can see that it's not one of these people. Steve Stone, he's 30 and his phone number is three. So now if we display all of our contacts, we can see we have John Doe, John Bon Jovi, Steve Stone. But again, let's say our contacts list is a thousand people long and we want to find just the Johns. Let's go ahead and find contact, enter contacts name to look up John. If to look up in contact full name, argument of type none type is not iterable. So it looks like our code has a little bit of a bug in it. Let's figure out what that bug is from. All right, so we found our bug and apparently the full name method was just printing. It wasn't actually returning the string. When we were trying to look up the original name in the person's full name, it was looking at a none object instead of actually looking at a string. So we need to modify our code here to go ahead and return the string value instead of printing it. This should allow our code to now work. So let's go ahead and enter contact. Instead of doing this, what we were doing last time, let's just have John and Jane. Um, they're very young. <laughs> so now we'll enter Jane. And then let's go ahead and find a contact. We'll look for John. We can see when we look for John, John is right here. And then we go back to our options again. Uh, let's also show you that it works for the substrings. So if we enter Doe, we should get both of them now. Uh, so find contact, Doe. John and Jane are being printed out now. And again, for the sake of not having to populate all of this in all the time, uh, let's go ahead and persist this data and then load it in each time we rerun the program. It doesn't constantly keep getting wiped out every single time we try to rerun it and quit.